Okay, welcome once again to Philosophy Online Lecture. Here we are on political economy, and uh, we're going to be looking at the concept itself and uh, in relation with philosophy, okay? Now, the term political economy was gotten from the Greek word litikos, which means state and shushu, and nomos, which means rule of law. So then it meant the laws of state management. But however, it has gone broader. Now, political economy is a branch of social science that studies the relationship between the society and individuals, between the markets and the state. And uh, it uses diverse tools and methods from political, or from politics, right, and from economy okay to study this okay and uh, it is also the study of the production trade distribution and the relationship of uh, production trade and distribution with laws and the government itself and uh, it is important to note that we have two ideologies in political economy we have that of capitalism socialism and then uh, communism now capitalism is where uh, means of production and distribution is controlled by private individuals and geared towards making profits, while in socialism, uh, means of production and uh, distribution is owned by the state, and it is meant for the welfare of the people rather than uh, profit. And then we have uh, communism, where it is not state-owned, but the people owned. So yeah, the people work and get according to their needs in communism, okay? So it is important to note those. Now, uh, philosophy comes in to study the ideas in economic reasoning, right? And then also to critically evaluate its relationship and impact to the society in terms of areas like ethics, values, referism, social justice, and uh, the various polit policies, right, in economics. So uh, philosophy stimulates individuals through critical thinking and logical arguments to help them respond to economic and political challenges, okay? So it is also important to note that we have three schools of thought with various standpoints in political economy. We have the Marginal School, uh, which uh, holds uh, the socialist and communist view, okay, that of an egalitarian society, the Marginal School by Karl Marx and, uh, you know, his people, Engels and so on, okay? Now we have the, uh, social, uh, you know, the Marginal School advocates that uh, from state owned, the people are going to own the means of production and get according to their needs. They were against exploitation of capitalism, okay? Now in the classical school, which is the second school, also known as the liberal school, we have scholars like Adam Smith and David Ricardo, strong advocates of capitalism, and you you hear the slogan in this school that we must work to earn, okay? That governments do not make profits, okay? So they are, uh, they are this uh, capitalism now. And also, we now have another school that came after, and that is the neoclassical school or the neoliberal school. This school now comes and says, well, you know what, uh, and socialism, uh, capitalism, we can have a mixed economy, okay? So the neoclassical school is more like a mixed economy of both capitalism and socialism, okay, where uh, both private individuals and the states, through regulations, come together and uh, control the economy of the uh of the country so to say okay now it's also important to note that in political economy we have two structures okay we have uh uh sorry uh politics is an higher structure to economy and i'll uh, let you know this through the definition of david easton on uh political economy he said politics is an auto Retentive allocation of value to show that politics is higher than economic. Okay, so that is that on the beginning of political economy. In the next videos, we'll be talking about uh, the various political economy theories like mercantilism, physiocracy, that of Adam Smith, David Ricardo, and so on. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe, comment your reaction so we know. Uh, what you think about this. Thank you so much.